Hello, Shalom. I am so excited for this season that we are in right now, and Shavuot Pentecost is this weekend right around the corner. Today is day 48 in the counting of the Omar, and I just wanted to share the place we are in in this particular season of time within the body of Christ that a lot of people aren't aware of that I have been blessed to share on some live streams and some prayer calls. So as you know, we just had Passover almost 50 days ago, and that's when we celebrated Yeshua, that he was our Passover lamb, and he rose from the dead. And fast forward, we have Shabbat or Pentecost that is coming up this weekend. Well, I just want to share a little bit of the history of that. The first Passover, as we know, was with the, the Hebrew children that had been in bondage in Israel for over 400 years. And... God told them to put the blood of the lamb over the doorposts, and they were hidden inside as the plague of death passed over. And then they left. We know how they went, uh, escaped Egypt, and they went to Mount Sinai. There was a trip that took place, and it was 50 days, and that's where we get from Egypt to Mount Sinai is 50 days. And that's where we get Pentecost from. Penta is the Greek for 50. So that's counting of those 50 days. Okay, when Yeshua walked the earth, he celebrated the Feast of the Lord. And he celebrated Passover. And he celebrated the counting of the Omar. And he celebrated um, Pentecost Shavuot. Well, a little bit of history with that from a Jewish perspective and prophetic parallels is that Israel, the nation of Israel was in bondage and they didn't really have this intimate relationship with their God, with Yahweh. And they, he spared them from death and the very next day they left Egypt. They got to the Red Sea, but before they even crossed the Red Sea, God's spirit came visibly, tangibly as a pillar of fire by night and as a cloud by day that led them. In Jewish historical writings, they believe that the presence of God wasn't just a figure up above their heads that led them as fire or as a cloud, but that he consumed, enveloped, covered them in himself for those 50 days as he led them from Egypt to Mount Sinai. Now in Isaiah, God calls his nation of Israel. He says, I was a husband to her. And there are many references in the Old Testament to God being a husband to Israel. So he set them free from bondage. And then he started this courtship of this deep relationship, this intimacy where they were in the middle of him from the moment they left Egypt. And then He took them through the Red Sea, which if you were to do a traditional Jewish wedding, you would have a uh, a mikvah, a ritual cleansing bath. Well, he prophetically took his people through this ritual cleansing from all of the spiritual junk that had got on them from Egypt and all the false gods. So he took them through this ritual cleansing. Then he, in this courtship, covers them with himself from wandering the wilderness to Mount Sinai. And there they meet him. And God, and the word of God says that he descends like a cloud over the top of Mount Sinai. It was a hoopah, a covering of glory and protection of himself. And when he meets his people, his bride, he gives them the Ten Commandments, which was, just, was not just, oh, here's a bunch of laws I have to obey. It was a love contract. In a Jewish ceremony, there's the the ketubah. There's a wedding contract. So in these Ten Commandments, he says that I am your God. And I will love you and take care of you. And we're going to have the best relationship if you abide by these ten laws so that you don't have sin and a wall between you and me. So this was a love letter to have the best relationship Israel with their husband, God. And then he tells Moses to build a box, a special box, which we call the Ark of the Covenant, 
but in today's modern world, we have special boxes, um, safety deposit boxes to put our treasures. Um, women, maybe not so much now, but in my generation had like a hope chest to put important things that they were going to bring into this marriage, uh, to, uh, to, into a marriage. So God gives the children of Israel, his wife, he marries them at Mount Sinai. He gives them this marriage contract, this get to by the Ten Commandments. He has Moses place it in the Ark of the Covenant. And he also has Moses place the rod that Aaron that budded, and he has him place manna. And these are three promises of who he's going to be as a husband to them. He is going to love them. He is going to, with the, with the Ten Commandments, he's going to love them. With the rod of Aaron, he is going to shepherd and guide them. With the manna, he's always going to provide and take care of them. So fast forward to now in modern Judaism, that people that don't know Messiah, Yeshua, they count the Omar for the 50 days, which has to do with the Harley, um, Harley, barley harvest, <laughs> and they count for 50 days. And they have a prayer that they do every night. But there's an expectancy of introspect, of, of crying out to God, because they know that this spiritual encounter is going to happen on Shavuot, on Pentecost. Okay, we who have Yeshua as Messiah, we know that intimacy of living in the middle of, of God. But Yeshua is the bridegroom, and we, the church, are the bride of Christ. And whether believers in Yeshua know it or not, I have seen around my own friends and family and then ministry leaders that I like to watch and learn from, there has been this call by the Holy Spirit for intimacy, for pressing in, for knowing Papa, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, for having this expectation and this posture of receiving, knowing that Pentecost is just around the corner. It actually starts, today's 48, day 48 of the counting of the Omar. So it's going to start Friday night at sundown, from Saturday night to sundown, and then um, Sunday, uh, the Western World Church will celebrate um, Pentecost Sunday. So it's a Holy Spirit weekend. But I want you to just think of this in this terms of this intimacy and what is happening prophetically because we have the first literal Passover that we've had in over 3,000 years where we had to be quarantined. We're inside so that death can pass over us. So I believe there's going to be a literal outpouring more than we have experienced today alive on this planet of the Holy Spirit this weekend. So I encourage you to press in to God. However that is, I have friends that are fasting. I have friends that are taking communion every day, worshiping every day. Some are doing all three. But however it is between you and Holy Spirit to get to that intimate place, get to that posture of receiving, place yourself in that. And I invite you to join us this Saturday night. We're going to be live streaming a Pentecost Shavuot celebration. It's going to be a little bit different than we've done before. And we are expecting Holy Spirit to just come however he wants. He can go through social media. He can go through the little glass screen of TVs, of phones, of tablets, of computers. And so I would like you to join us this Saturday at 6 p.m. And I have a shovel miracle I need help with also. If you would please subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Trisha Phillips, because we would like to live stream this also through YouTube, but you have to have a thousand followers. But I know nothing is impossible with God. So get in that place of expectation, of joy, because our God is in control. He has us, his children, that he is working in, among, and through to push away the darkness on this planet. So please join us Saturday at 6 p.m. on my Facebook channel, also Instagram. And I will be posting those also, but please subscribe to Trisha Phillips and let's get to that thousand followers so we can also live stream on YouTube. So bless you. Have a beautiful day in Yeshua for he is good and he loves you so much. Shalom.